Hi everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. So are you someone that doesn't have a whole lot of these types of stencils, but you're maybe thinking of investigating them and perhaps maybe you're not real sure you wanna spend the money on these types of stencils yet. Well, I have a treat for you. So I have a stack of acetate sheets that look like this. And I turned these acetate sheets, you know, this plain, into stencils that look like this using my Cricut. So I wanted to share that video with you today on how to take acetate sheets, turn them into fun stencils, and create beautiful projects that look like this. Now, here's a, light, a slight disclaimer. When I was filming this video, to show you how to make the stencil and then bring it to life on a card super quick and easy. I lost all video. I lost the video, the audio, everything crashed. So what do we do when craft projects don't quite go the way we want them? Well, we take the time to redo them. So in today's video, this is actually going to end up being a part one. I'm going to um, show you the supplies you need to make a project like this. I am going to explain to you the design space link for the stencils that I have created for you to make this type of project. And then I walk you through how to do this. And I do show you how to make a sentiment using your Cricut because I know that not everybody has wafer dies and stamps. So if you're someone who likes to make cards, but you're wanting to branch out from the insert cards and the cutaway cards that we love making on our Cricut, then this video will walk you through that. It's very fun and very easy. And then I'm gonna make a part two, and it's going to show you how to make the, um, the stencil layering stencil because this is for stencils that are uh, put on top of each other but how to make that stencil in design space from a you know an image or a, a picture that you see in there and the sky's the limit guys soon you'll be making these stencils yourself acetate sheets i buy a ton of them on amazon and um they just, they come in a huge pack. So we can just make stencils all day long and then make the most beautiful cards. So without any more hesitation, let's head on down to the craft table and get started with the project. I am going to show you how to create a stencil, a layered stencil with your Cricut. I'm also going to show you how to do a writing sentiment that is then cut out using an offset with your Cricut as well. This project can be done on the Cricut Joy, the Maker, Explore, whatever Cricut you have available. Other than the ink blending that I did with my inks and my blending brushes, all of this was made using my Cricut. The first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a uh, an A2 sized card base. This one is side folding and this one is top folding. Now I am partial to top folding cards myself. This one just happened to be one that I had available so I wanted to try it out. Then you will need two pieces of four and a quarter by five and a half um, cardstock. This is 65 pound you know, lightweight cardstock. You're going to need one for the stenciled panel, and then you will need one to create these sentiments. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that in Design Space. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need four sheets of clear acetate. Okay, so these are not um, cellophane weight like, you know, cellophane bags. These are more substantial. These are actually acetate sheets. And I used my Cricut to turn these into stencils. And then I have an envelope to store the stencil. I have 
some inks that I'm going to use to blend. Now, this particular card was two yellows um, and then two different pinks. This particular card that we're doing now, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to have uh, flowers that are uh, pink petals with some purple shading, and then I'm going to have some blue flowers with some um, kind of a teal color shading, and then I have my yellow middles for the flowers. So I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz Distressed Ink Little Mini Cubes for my ink blending. And so I do have my blending brushes. Um, as far as the stencils are concerned, they clean easily with rubbing alcohol. You spray them with rubbing alcohol, you wipe them down with a paper towel, and they are ready to go. I'm also going to have some washi tape that will help me just kind of keep everything on my glass mat and without moving so I can get a nice blend. And I've got some foam tape for um, putting the panel onto the card base. And I already have my sentiment ready to go and I actually already have foam squares on the back but I have not pulled up the release paper. Let's head over to Design Space so that I can show you the design and how I created the stencils and the sentiments and I have two little surprises for you as well. Here in Design Space, what you will see when you open this file is I have three, this is the card we're making tonight, plus two more. I have three um, particular, what I call layer stencil sets. And I need to tell you a little bit about what you'll find over here in the layers panel. And then I went ahead and I left the sentiment that I used for tonight's card. And so what you see here is you see the writing font and then I did an offset around the writing. So this is just a text. I went over here to text. I wrote, hello friend, chose the font that I wanted. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute with the offset. And then I just duplicated the offset so that I could layer and make dimension with my sentiment. Okay, so we'll talk about these momentarily. Let's talk about these layered stencils. So the one that we're using tonight, I'm, I'm calling it Groovy Daisies, and I have here that it's four layers. When you open the layers panel over here, you'll see where it says layer one, layer two, three, and four. If you were to click on each one of these, Basically what I have going on is I have the first layer, okay, and I also attach to it a number one, and the numbers are going to be cut into the acetate as well as the petals. And this was just my way of kind of keeping them straight. I did not number the other two layered stencil images. Let me move this back. So this is the one we're going to work with today. So when you open that, let me hide these, like I showed you a little while ago with the acetate sheets. Okay, you're going to have one that's going to cut out some large petals. That's layer one. Layer two is going to be some smaller daisies. So some smaller petals. Layer three are, go are going to be the inners for the larger daisies. And layer four are going to be the inners for the smaller daisies. And we'll just ink blend each one of those at a time. Okay, so your bonus stencils over here. And I'm going to hide, well, I'm going to leave these unhidden, so when you open, everything's going to look like this. Let me collapse that and these so that we can, there we go. So I'm calling this middle one the Danish floral, and it is five layers. And so let me 
Let me hide some of these really quick. Okay, so layer one, you have the yellow pieces. And it get, you can use any color that you want, whatever um, ink blending colors that you have. Okay, so we have layer one, and then we have layer two, layer three, layer four, and layer five. Okay, so you'll need five different colors that complement each other. And then the third layered stencil design, I just call it color splash. Again, this is also five layers. So let me hide these and we'll go through each one. So layer one is just this little bit of hot pink elements. Again, you can use any colors that you're wanting to use. Layer two brings in quite a few more. Layer three is another small grouping. Layer four is a pretty substantial grouping. And then layer five. So these are bonus layered stencil groupings for you. So all of those are grouped. Now let's talk about the sentiments. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these in Design Space for you, but I wanna show you how I made them because this is how you can make your own sentiments anytime you want. So the first thing that I did is I went over to text. Let me move, let me move this over here. Okay, so I went over to text and then I went up to the font and I found something, let's see. If you go here to the filter icon, you can actually select just writing fonts, okay? So let me move that. And then you can just scroll through and decide which font that you want to use. So let's see, let's pick a different one. Let's do Nordic. And I'm just going to do a different cinnamon. Oh, there goes the AC. Hopefully it is not too loud. It is very warm right now, so I hate to turn it off. Okay, so what I did is I chose the font that I wanted. And then I wrote out my sentiment. Okay, just like that. And it is a pen function. Right? So we want to make sure it's drawn. It's a pen function. And then I chose a color. So let's say, how about this color here? Okay, so there it is. The next thing is I want to make an offset. So the Cricut is going to write this out for me. And then I'm going to come up here to offset. And I'm going to see what it looks like. So this is 0.25. Now if I go a little bit bigger, let's try 3, 0.319, that's a little, mm, that's probably a little too big. Let me try 0.275. Okay, so you can see here, um, it's kind of a nice border around. It does have an indention here, but that'll be okay. And then I'm going to click on apply. And I here I have my sentiment now. Now currently this offset says draw. You can see that over here in the layers panel and you get a little warning icon. I need to come up here to the operation and I want to change that to basic cut. Then I'm going to go ahead and change it to white so that I can see all of it. So this is what I have here for my sentiment. I have a written layer and then I have a cut layer. Now I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to click on attach. And then let's say that I'm going to use that for this particular card here. Well, that is way too big. So I'm just going to go ahead and size that down to what I think that I want. You can put it anywhere on the card that suits you. 
So that is what it will look like when I'm done making that card. Now in order to build dimension and make the sentiment more sturdy, I am going to open the layers panel over here. I'm going to select just the offset and then I'm going to duplicate it twice. There's once, twice. Now these, I do not want to attach them. They can be separate. Okay, and so now I have the sentiment. It will write it and cut it. Then it will cut two more shadow layers of the sentiment. And then these are glued together to make a nice, sturdy, dimensional sentiment. Okay, so let's do this. I am going to hide all of the things except for the groovy daisies. As far as the sentiments are concerned, you would need to have your pen and your cardstock. Okay, I'm going to just hide those for now and I'll turn all of these back on when I save the file for you and put it in the description. Okay, let's go to our make screen. Now I'm just, I have my joys selected here, but you could use any Cricut machine. I want to show you what you're going to do in order to cut this out. So I'm going to choose make. Okay, now that we are connected to our joy, um, my software for some reason defaults to four and a half by 12. You can change these to the four and a half by six and a half. Um, this is going to be this, the grouping of smaller, smaller daisies. Okay. And then we have the inners for the larger daisies. Then I have the inners for the smaller daisies and I have the larger daisies themselves. Okay, so you're going to need four sheets of acetate and you'll be cutting four different times. The next thing I'm going to do is click continue. Okay, once you are connected to your joy, you're going to want to go to browse all materials and then up here in the search box, you're going to want to type acetate. You're going to choose the foil acetate and click done. And then you're going to want to choose more pressure and remember material settings. This way you don't have to select the foil acetate more pressure four different times. We're going to set it once and the Cricut will remember this for each subsequent map. Also note that the blade you need um, is the fine point blade. And this is true whether you're using your Joy, Explore, or your Maker. Okay, and then you would load the mat into your machine and follow the prompts to select Go and cut your acetate sheet. And you would do that for all four of these uh, mats. Okay, once you have everything cut out, and then you can just pull back your mat from the acetate sheet just like you would if you were removing vinyl or cardstock, and then your stencil is ready to use. So let's go over to the overhead camera let me show you how to use the stencils and put together a quick and easy card. I do suggest that you have some sort of large envelope to keep your stencil uh, protected in when you're not using the stencil. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our card panel and I'm going to put it here. Let's see, I'm going to move this one. So I don't get any ink on it. I'm going to move these. Okay, there, now we have some space. All right, so I'm just going to grab a small tape 
a, a small piece of washi tape, put it on the back, and then, let's see, I'm just going to put that right here. Okay, so that's not going to go anywhere. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one layer at a time. And I like to start with the large petals. Okay, so I'm going to take the first stencil and I'm just going to lay it over my paper, getting it lined up where I want it. That's good there. And then I'm going to use some more washi tape. I'm going to make sure my stencil doesn't move. Now, if you have a um, grip mat, this would definitely be when you would want to um, put everything down on your grip mat. Okay. And um, I don't have a grip mat. Well, I have a four by four grip mat. I want a bigger one, so I need to put that on my order, but this is now not going anywhere at all. So the first thing I need to decide is do I which color scheme do I want um, for the larger flowers? Um, I think that I want, I think I'm going to do the blue just for giggles. Okay, so this is peacock feathers. And I'm just going to load my brush up there. Okay, kind of tap off a little bit. Now, what I found is if you start here um, on the center of each of these flowers, then you can blend out toward the petals like that. And it just gives you a nice look. It's almost like a gradient look. And I am not going to worry about whether or not it's completely filled in because I'm going to come back in with the um, cracked pistachio to add some dimension and some shading. Um, this one is the cracked pistachio. So funny story, when I was making the other card version, I was videoing that. And um, everything is great. I was getting toward the end. And I don't know what happened, but my internet just like went down. So I lost all connectivity, everything. And so I had to start all over. <laughs> so this is video number two. Okay. I think that that is good. So each one of these look a little bit different, but they look great. Okay, so then you want to gently lift your stencil. Okay, there you go. And then um, as far as cleaning these, so I just set these aside and I clean them completely after the fact. And what I'll do is I'll just spray them with some regular rubbing alcohol and dry them off. Well, they actually kind of dry right away. I'll wipe them down with a paper towel and they will be really clean. And then I will put them here in the envelope. So the next layer, let's see. This is, this particular layer, these are the inside, these are those middles 
going to again, oh, didn't get it on the glass mat. I'm just going to tape this down and this will be good to go. Okay, so here's my yellow. Let's see. So this I'm going to use mustard seed. And I'm just going to come in. Probably should use my small blending brush, but no big deal. Okay, so this is there, and I think what I actually, I think what I want to do is give a little dimension to okay to the middle it just looks a little flat so this is wild honey and I am gonna grab uh, I'm gonna grab this small one here and I'm just going to go on about one side and just give it a little bit see look at the difference these seem just kind of flat that seems more three-dimensional these remind me of my alcohol ink markers which I absolutely adore okay so there's our wild honey lift up this one look that is pretty just by itself like you can literally just slap a sentiment on that like boom done isn't that awesome okay I'm really liking this <laughs> this stencil I made and I just what I did basically is I just found um, an image in Design Space that had you know lots of things going on. I duplicated it, and then the different elements um, I just contoured out different things for for each of the. For instance, you know I just duplicated it four times. Then I contoured out everything but this. And then on the second one, I, con I contoured out everything, everything but those. And so that's what I did to make the stencil. I'll have to do another video um, because, again, I have no idea. I guess with all of the internet issues that are going on lately, the, uh, my internet must have blipped out. So, I decided, since I'm going hiking tomorrow, I will have to find a time to actually show you how I made the stencil. But in the meantime, you will have the benefit of using the file that I've created for you. This is Picked Raspberry. It is one of my most favorite Okay. All right, so again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start in the center of the flower. And I'm just going to blend out to the edge of the petals, just like so. And then I will come back with the purple and starting in the middle, blending out for, again, some shade and dimension. This is a really, really, really versatile stencil now that I'm working with it. There are so many options. And if you're wanting to get your feet wet with some ink blending, um, 
you can just try some of these little cubes. I live in a really tiny place, so I don't have a lot of real estate for the, um, you know, the big ink pads and tons of them. So I just have, you know, I have about three of these little tins and each tin holds 12. And I just have a variety of colors. And so far they have served me really well and I haven't felt the need to go get a ton of colors. Okay, so there, that is looking really sharp. Loving it. Okay. All right, so we are about halfway through summer. How's everybody doing? I am finally going on. Oh my goodness, look at that. <sighs> that is gorgeous. Okay, I didn't even know that that would work out like that. I'm really just kind of playing around. I just really wanted to do another card and show you how the stencil worked. <laughs> Again, just give it a little more pink just to kind of blend out that purple. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is awesome. Okay, so let's lift this stencil here. And we'll put down our last stencil. And this is these are the middles of those last ones. And make sure it's lined up really good. Y'all, this is really fun. Um, I encourage you to try this, especially if you have some acetate sitting around. Um, uh, yeah, I encourage you to try this out because this is really fun. I cannot believe this has worked out so well. And the effect is just, I'm really very flabbergasted, really. Okay. All right, so this one is Scattered Straw. And now I, if you'll notice, I haven't really, you know, um, cleaned off my, my yellow or, you know, I just use, I don't really clean my brushes. I, I take a roll of paper towels and then I go like this. But a lot of times, um, since all of my colors are pretty much the same and work relatively together, I a lot of times just leave it. And I get some nice blending. Okay, so I do think there needs to be a little bit of that dimension for these. I don't know. I can use this yellow. And then as the inks dry, they they soak into the fibers, they blend more, they soften. That looks fantastic. All right, so we are going to peel this up. We're gonna cut this panel and put this on the card base. And then we will be done. 
Okay, so the next step is to cut this down. Now, this is four and a quarter by five and a half, and I want it to look like it's a picture in a frame. So I'm actually gonna cut it down to three and a half by four and three quarters. So to make that happen, I'm gonna take a little bit off of different sides. All right. So we are at four and a quarter. We want to bring it down to three and a half. So let's see. Here is three and a half. Okay. You want to come down to from five and a half to four and three quarters. There's four and a half. So three quarters is about there. Okay. All right, so now, see, that's a really big, it looks like a framed picture. I just love it. Okay, so I think that's great. I am going to take my card base, and I like to put it in my misty so that I know it's not going to move. You could also put it like in a scoring thing and let's see I need my scissors okay so I'm just gonna take this foam tape I think I got this particular roll at Hobby Lobby and it's quite wide And I'm going to have to go into my drawer and get more foam tape. Okay, well, I have to laugh because the only other one that's wide like that is half of the thickness. So I have, I put it down, took off the release paper, and then I put another layer on top so that it would all be the same. I guess I'm going to have to get some more foam tape. I thought I had plenty. So, oop. note to self. Okay. And then, am I? Oh, I think I'm good on there. Okay. So, then I'm going to bring over my card panel, so just like that, and then we're going to just center that. See, I'm going to have to look overhead really fast. Okay, there we go. And then, so earlier, I had cut out a couple of layers of the offset and glued them behind this sentiment that, you know, we wrote it out, had an offset, we attached the writing and the offset so that the Cricut would cut it all out. And so now I don't need a stamp, I don't need a die. I had my Cricut do it for me, and so now 
Okay, so it looks like this is a lot of pink right here. So I could just put this, I could put it cattywampus like that. I could put it here. I could put it down. Oh man, this is really hard. I don't know where I want to put it. Maybe, oh here, you know, we'll just put it down like that. Okay. So, let's see. I need to be able to see what I'm putting where. Okay. Yeah, I like it down here. So, okay. There we go. Okay, move this out of the way. All right, well that is, that's our card. That looks really good. And you can see the ink blending. It has, it has settled into the fibers and it's smoothed out. Oh, this is just gorgeous. In fact, I like this one better than this one. I just love that contrast of colors. That's the end of tonight's project. Um, I hope that you found this really informative and that you will give, give it a try. Get some acetate sheets and make some stencils on your Cricut. Um, at a minimum, try out the three that I've provided for you so you could get some practice. And I will make a video to show you how I actually made them since the original video this evening completely obliterated into cyber cloudness. I don't know where it went. But anyway, I wanted to show you how the stencils work. That's how they work. I showed you how to do a sentiment um, with an offset so that you could have that without needing a die or a stamp. And this, these look great. Okay, so uh, if you found this helpful, informative, and inspiring, or all, any of the three, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to share it with your crafty friends. And if you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you around. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when new content is posted. And until I see you in the next video, enjoy your summer days, um, hang out with some friends, maybe give someone a nice hello phone call or send them a card. And until I see you in the next video, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.